Welcome back to season two of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I am your host, Marcia Blaine, a licensed professional counselor, a clinical hypnotherapist, an author, motivator, and life coach. Join us during the season as we begin to normalize freedom. Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Welcome back to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. I am your host, and tonight we get the opportunity to talk about she motions. If you've been watching the series, you know we already hit the button on he motions. So now we're bringing forth she motions as we discuss the importance of female emotions. I have the pleasure of having with me a licensed professional counselor and licensed marriage and family therapist, Ms. Dunya Franklin. She is a wife, mother, a daughter, an interdependent Black woman. She's been married to her Air Force veteran for 25 years, and they have seven children, four boys and three girls. She loves to travel, swim, go to concerts, and just spend time with family. She's also her own practice owner, entitled Counseling for Hope, Healing, and Change, LLC. And that's in Mississippi, right? No, that's here in Georgia. Oh, excuse me. I don't know why I thought she was in Mississippi. Okay. No, I'm she right here works. in Georgia. Nice. She also works at the Veterans Administration as a crisis responder on the Veterans Crisis Line. We actually love the work that we do. Her professional goal is to inspire hope and assist families to heal and change and be the best version of themselves. As a licensed marriage family therapist and professional counselor, she earned her counseling degree in 2010. She has over 20 years of experience in working with mental health, personal crisis, and relationships. She works with adolescents, adults, and groups of all ages ranging from addiction, anger management, anxiety, depression, domestic violence, grief and loss, personal challenges, relationship issues, stress, and trauma. But her passion is working with couples. Mm -hmm. She has worked in various mental health community settings, whether it's residential or outpatient, domestic violence facilities, and she describes her approach as eclectic. For those in the counseling field, our eclecticism, that's not even a word, we just (laughs) snatch whatever theories that we need to help you become the best version of you. That's right. So we're not stuck in a box on how we provide therapy. We actually look at your life and honor where you are and bring in all the treatment processes that we know to best help you. Dunya has a favorite quote, quote. she says, I hope you love yourself enough to recognize the things you need to heal in your life and find the courage to change them. Dunya, welcome to Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and I appreciate your invite to this. Thank uh, you for your yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> you are welcome. This is a, a, a very controversial topic, I hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just dive into it. I know that, you know, putting the term out there, she motions and he motions, they're not new terms. But can you define for the audience what she motions is? Okay. So you look it up you'll get three different terms. So the one that if I'm gonna choose one I like is, um, it's the experience uh, or a feeling reaction that a female has when she expresses her feelings for which there are no factual basis. Mm, That's the definition, one definition. Okay. Um, The other definition is when someone particularly a woman emotionally overreacts to a harmless situation. That's so biased. 
Exactly. And the third <laughs> definition, the third that sounds definition, like it was written by a man. The third definition I had is mm-hmm. the experience of female emotions by a male. Hmm. So, That's kind of biased too. I like ex- that first one. Right, right. Well, when my clients refer to she motions, most of the time they're referring to female emotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Period. Right. Period. They don't have that negative connotation to it. Right. Um, and it shouldn't have a negative connotation because as male, female bodies and emotions go, we process things very differently. Absolutely. We identify things very differently. And what impacts a, a female uh one way may impact a male a different way and vice versa. So those last two bias definitions, we throwing those out the window. Right, they right. Just, so yeah. what I gathered by mm-hmm. working with my clients, because let's, well, well, first of all, I like to say this, she motion is not a clinical term. Right. It's right. not clinical. You're not going to find mm-hmm. it anywhere in, in our, um, the, the uh the associate DSM, the APA, mm-hmm. the DSM, mm-hmm. you're not gonna find it anywhere. You're not gonna mm-hmm. find it in the American Psychological Association, their definition. So any of that, right? right? So it's a term. I was trying to figure, figure out where the term actually even came from. Mm. Couldn't find okay. it. Because I think it's something that we kind of culturally made up, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, depending on who's speaking about she motions mm-hmm. will determine the definition. But right. uh, for, for, for me, keeping it on the pious, I mean, on the positive and not trying to be biased or stereotype, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think basically it's um, an emotion of how women deal with their matters, situations or experiences that they find personally important or significant to them. Absolutely. And and that's such a clear-cut definition because it's an emotion that we own. Mm -hmm. But whatever we're experiencing in the moment. That's right. Being able to express that. And when we look at those other biased definitions, it's almost um, in this condescending way kind of express that women need to stop expressing emotions they've not absolutely they, that's that's what I got from that well well when some people when I like all these things on TikTok um sometimes I see negative comments about she emotions and then other times I see very positive things trying to mm-hmm. make people aware of emotions that females have right? Mm-hmm. Emotional mm-hmm. emotions and how to handle it and, and, and all those type of things. But the other, the other things that I see that are very negative is like women aren't supposed to have these emotions and mm-hmm. it doesn't take all of that, right? And we shouldn't mm-hmm. express our emotions. So I was like, well, where did this, that's when I started kind of um, doing some research and kind of looking and saying, well, where did this term she motions even come up from why do some people have negative responses Mm -hmm. or negative approach or uh connotation to she motions and then others Mm -hmm. have positive like right where's the middle ground yeah and and the thing is is that i believe the middle ground is really understanding yourself and giving yourself permission to not only feel but express what you're feeling Exactly. What I found is a lot of men can't handle, or a lot of people can't handle women expressing their emotions without saying they're over the top because oftentimes they don't want to hear them and they don't want to be accountable for the emotions that she's feeling, right? Absolutely. So it's easier to, you know, to really take their voice down on and say, oh, you're doing too much. Right. And usually... When women feel like their voices are being heard, what are some ways that they show up when their voice isn't heard? Well, first of all, it's 
when women feel like that we, we that we're being heard, um, we're more engaged, mm-hmm. we're more excited, we're more apt, first of all, to open up. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When, if I feel like you're paying attention to me and you're really listening to me, then I'm more open to you. Right. And I feel yeah. I feel more connected to you when we're safe and we feel safe. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because mm-hmm. women, you know, we've been forced uh way back as far as slavery into spaces of having to be strong Mm -hmm. and to persevere and hold our heads down, but still continue on. And we did not start raising up until we felt safe that we weren't going to be abused or taken advantage of. And so what, what are your thoughts about that as far back as we've been conditioned with certain levels of emotions. Oh my goodness. Marcia, this that that's a loaded question. You know why? Because mm-hmm. it 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 goes, we can pick it apart and, and just deal with so many different areas. But let's let me start here. As far back as slavery, right? Mm-hmm. We were supposed to be strong women, or we had to be strong women. Yeah. Had mm-hmm. to be because our families was torn apart, our babies mm-hmm. taken away from us, our husbands or the provider, the man of the house, our covering was taken mm. and pulled away from us. Mm-hmm. So then we had to be strong, right? Mm-hmm. And we could mm-hmm. not, it was, well, I won't say could not, but it was very difficult for us to show emotions. Right. And, in, and back in those- we showed emotions, our children and husbands would be snatched. Exactly. Because they knew that they had tapped into something that would allow us to become dumb, mm-hmm. you know, docile and, and, and vulnerable. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 And and so even though we knew we had to be strong, we it still need our emotions still need to be released. That part. And so you said it earlier, because we didn't feel safe, Mm -hmm. right? We had no one to really teach us how Mm -hmm. to even show and express emotions. We learned how to express, express, especially negative emotions out of um, destitute or or, or self-preservation, like, we had no choice. We had to figure it out, right? Mm-hmm, Whether mm-hmm. it was screaming to the top of our lungs, mm-hmm. you know, or bellying over and just groan, groan moaning and, and grinding our teeth, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. how we learn to express emotion, not because we were taught in a healthy way. Right, right. And, right? and you know, the thing about that expressing of emotions when we do express emotions, and I'm, I can only speak in the Black community because I'm Black. Right. When we do express ourselves emotionally, even when we're at a calm tone like this, we're still pointed to as an angry Black woman. Black woman. We're still told that we're not small enough, right, to right. express ourselves. So how do we help women to understand that they are enough in the expression of what they feel. How do we help them? Well, they have to under, well, anybody, just not a black woman, but women Mm -hmm. in general, we have to learn ourselves, Mm -hmm. understand that Mm -hmm. we are enough, right? We have to understand and learn who we are. Yeah in order to know that we are enough. We have to tell ourselves that. We have to surround mm-hmm. ourselves with other women, right? Yeah. Who can support yeah. us and who can um, continuously tell us that message or share mm-hmm. that message. You are enough, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what we need to do and, 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 and love ourselves. And we say that mm-hmm. all the time. Um, but the same way you love, 
your children or you love your partner or your, your family member, which you protect them, mm -hmm. keep them safe, right? You um, make sure that they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. It's the same way we love ourselves. We protect yes. ourselves. We keep ourselves safe. We care for ourselves, yes. right? In that yes. way. Yes. So we have to do that so we know that you are enough. And continue to set goals for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not too much, you know, one thing at a time to know, yes, I can accomplish this within myself, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but I think one of the most important things that we don't do as a Black community is really get mm -hmm. the support that we need and support That's what I'm one ready another. To hear. You yes. Said, as women, we need to have that support group. In my practice, I often hear women talk about the struggles of finding mm -hmm. friends and, and creating those support groups. What are some things that you would suggest that you know women can do to not only embrace themselves, mm -hmm. but to embrace new relationships? Well, in order, I tell these, I tell this to my clients all the time, and, and you are mm -hmm. so right. Where women have difficult times connecting with other women because we're so busy. Mm. But but I tell I, I I tell my clients all the time that in order to make those connections and to get that support, you have to build relationships. Yeah, you have yeah. to, and in order to build those relationships, you got to get out and meet mm. other women. Whether mm -hmm. it's through your church community, mm -hmm. whether it's through a volunteer program mm -hmm. or a professional, professional educational mm -hmm. uh, group, mm -hmm. um, whether it's just a book club, even right, mm -hmm. getting con but it's getting connected with different people, um, mm -hmm. and not always people that are like you or do right. the same things that you mm -hmm. do. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times stepping out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. many times, you'll find that those, the people who are the most unlike you can mm -hmm. be the most supportive. Right, right. And, and I absolutely agree. One of the things that I would share on top of what you said is before you can begin looking externally, to develop relationships, you have to begin internally. Mm -hmm. It has to start within you. Oftentimes, part of the reason we can't build healthy relationships, there's some, some low level of trauma that hadn't been addressed. Mm -hmm. Something that was said that may have caused damage or hurt and pain that is stopping you from trusting relationships. Can you talk a little bit about the trauma of relationships? Well, I like to go back to what you just said, knowing ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and dealing with ourselves internally. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about emotion, emotions affect everything we do because yeah. everything can bring up a, a, an emotion, right? Mm -hmm. We can spend years, a lifetime, trying to understand the depths of our mm -hmm. emotions mm -hmm. because emotions can be um, conscious uh -huh. or subconscious. Right. And the ones that are subconscious, that's the, those are the ones that we could spend a lifetime trying to figure out and pull mm -hmm. out. And that's, and some of those subconscious emotions are, buried because of the trauma that yes. we have experienced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and trauma is different for everybody. Yes. What causes me trauma might not be traumatizing for you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think understanding, first of all, that there's trauma there, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. the first, awareness is the first thing to being able to address a problem or a situation or trauma right. or whatever it is, awareness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
that's the part of us going inward and internally mm -hmm. figuring out who we are, what's going on with us as women. You right. know, what am I dealing with right now as a woman? You know, mm -hmm. is it a traumatizing um, experience that I had that I'm mm -hmm. stuffing and pushing down and, and don't want to deal with? Mm -hmm. Or is it something else? Right. You know, right. where are these emotions coming from? Mm -hmm. That's the real question. Where, That's where the real question. Mm -hmm. Where are these emotions coming from? Because you, like I said, you're affected, your emotions are affected by every, everything. Everything and anything mm -hmm. uh, creates or affects your emotions, whether exactly. it's happy, good, sad, bad, right? And emotions can affect your mental health. It, it, it's affected, could be affected by genetics, hormones, mm -hmm. right? Um, we talked about a little bit earlier, you, you mentioned about men. We were talking about the negative connotation. Well, mm -hmm. We deal with our emotions very mm -hmm. different from the way men, because the way we process, our hormones are processed different in our bodies, right? But not only that, there's a societal expectation for yep. us to process emotions differently. And why is that, though? <laughs> why, why, why are we segregated? I feel like, like he motions, she motions. We're human. It's emotions. Why is it, it is. segregated? Well, or I, I think that it's segregated because men were stifled in their experience and their expression of emotions because in the Black community, again, I can only talk about the Black community. Right, right. They were told you're weak if you express emotions. They could not express emotions exactly. properly. Exactly. You're soft. If you express emotions, men right. don't express emotions. Women then were craving those emotional responses from those men so that they could feel safe and feel right. protected and feel vulnerable. And so that's where that clash comes from, right? Because we weren't getting it. Because we mm -hmm. weren't getting it because they couldn't do it. Because mm -hmm. they, they, but I think, but when you go back to that, to that, on one instance, men were told in the, I can only say in the black community, mm -hmm. from my experience, men were told that they are weak or, mm -hmm. you know, that they weren't that, that, or they were sissies if they cried mm -hmm. or showed any type of vulnerability or their emotions, right? Where women, when we were showing emotions, oh, you crazy, oh, you're doing mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. So to me, both it was negative it was still it was oh, negative it was negative it was uh, you sent a negative message to black women and black men saying mm -hmm. that they can't express their emotions or show their emotions but yet we're expected we're expected to be so emotional right mm -hmm. on but the you other know hand what's funny is the one emotion the two emotions that are constantly shown is anger and fear. Yes. On both sides yes. of the umbrella, anger and fear, because those are the two emotions that are expected by society from us. And because those were the two prominent emotions that were evoked. Mm -hmm. If you think about mm -hmm. it, we were feared, we feared the, the, mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. master mm -hmm. and, and, and we were angry and hurt by mm -hmm. what was done to us. So those are the two prominent, you're absolutely right. And there was a reason for that. And that's that cultural impact, right? Society, not even cultural impact, but societal impact of the expectation of us showing fear and anger and then responding and then saying, well, what, what happened? What's wrong with you? Why are you responding this way? Exactly. Well, on one hand, um, on one hand, we're looked at as that black woman, mm -hmm. right? Who mm -hmm. we're expected to, um, as a black woman, to perform mm -hmm. as a super human mm -hmm. or superwoman. You know how we, you know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. expect us to be superwoman, do all the things, but treated as a subhuman. 
mm. expected to, to, to behave as a superhuman, but treated as a subhuman. Right. That's sub, how, how that's, do we help women? One, I, I have a problem with, with the superwoman because superwomen don't honor themselves because and, they're too busy trying to take care of everybody else with the expectation that they have to and they can't honor themselves. It's right? a burden. It is a burden. It's a burden because it's a burden of strength being put on us mm -hmm. to try to be strong, right? Mm -hmm. And guess what it affects? Everything. Our emotional stability. Mm -hmm. it, is, it affects our emotional stability, our well-being. And like you said, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing and I'm concentrating on emotions. Of emotions is the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like you said, our emotional stability, our physical, our mental health, it affects mm -hmm. everything, like you said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that superwoman, it's a burden, I feel like. You know, it, it really is. It it it's an unfair burden. Unfair. Because we don't get the opportunity to really rest in our femininity. Yeah. To feel safe in yeah. our femininity and to honor ourselves in our femininity. We don't get the permission needed to say, it's okay to put you first. It's okay to think about you, right? And so a lot of times. That shows up in aggressive responses, angered mm -hmm. responses, irritability, lack of sleep. And then it boils over into the physicality of us being yes. women, weight yes. gain, diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, all of those things mm -hmm. are literally tapped tied into our inability to express our emotions. In my opinion, unexpressed emotions is just as physically damaging to the body as all of these diagnoses and in, in, uh, that I just mentioned. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I had wrote down some things uh -huh. to um, things to improve that causes emotional uh, instability or. Uh -huh. um, uh, that causes us to be so emotional, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, knowledge yes. and awareness. Mm -hmm. What is going on inside of me? What, what is causing these emotions? Mm -hmm. you know, like you said, you dive diving into, is it trauma? Is it relational? Is it health? You know, mm -hmm. what, what's mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. um, a balance of life. Yeah. We yes. need to balance our life and not try mm -hmm. to be superwoman and do everything and take care of everyone. Yeah. yeah. And guess who's the last person always on the list of being taken care of? Mm -hmm. Us. Exactly. Exactly. You know, if we could give some words of wisdom to women watching who have that S on their chest, to take it off and allow themselves freedom, because that's what this season is about, normalizing freedom. Allow <sighs> themselves to be free to feel. What would be some words of advice that you would give? Hmm. Well, if we're taking that S off the chest, mm -hmm. instead of replacing, I mean, thinking it as being a superwoman, Mm -hmm. I would remind myself um, self empowerment. Mm, I like self that. Self empowerment and mm. self love. Mm. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that. And, and, and um, we say, we use the word all the time self care. Yeah. So self empowerment, like allowing yourself and, and giving yourself permission to, to, as you say, be free. And mm -hmm. to, to do the things that that we really want to do, or express, being able to express and say what mm -hmm. we want to say within mm -hmm. ourselves. I mean, and mm -hmm. I'm just talking about to ourselves. Yeah, self talk. Yes. That's self talk. Self talk. Um, advocating for ourselves and 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 affirming ourselves. 
every day. You know what I mean? Um, loving on ourselves. I spoke about this earlier. Making sure you're safe, making sure you're protected, making sure you have a place where you're comfortable mm -hmm. in your own, not only in your own home, physicality, but in your own skin. In your own skin. Let's talk about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Because I know that as women, as females, we have a tendency to do the comparison game of aesthetics our hair, <coughs> excuse me, our look, mm -hmm. our physical makeup, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. How can we really help women to understand, to be okay within themselves? We all got areas that we may want to improve, but how can we help them understand that their self-talk is actually a jump start to whatever change they decide that they want to make. You know what, Marcia, that's a good question. And and as a therapist, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I work with lots of women, children, all, all people, kids, any all yeah. of them. But with women in particular, we have a difficult time for some reason affirming and having that conversation with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because we've been told for so many years or for so long, something different, a negative, mm -hmm. like your hair isn't straight enough, mm -hmm. or you're not um, slim enough, mm -hmm. or you don't have enough curves, whatever, you're not dark enough, you're not mm -hmm. light enough, mm -hmm. whatever the, the narrative or the message that, that we have been told that society has told us we believe. And so we have a hard oh, time in our minds changing that narrative. Mm -hmm. But what I will tell women, young women, old women, mm -hmm. older women, um, you got to start somewhere. You got to mm -hmm. start somewhere with, with you got to tell yourself, mm -hmm. um, start telling yourself that you're beautiful, that, that you're, that you're enough. Mm -hmm. that that you're sustainable that that you can uh, uh, meet all of the needs that you have for yourself mm -hmm. and you can reach and uh, and and acquire the things that you want in your dreams mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. certain goals but you have to start telling yourself this first first you have to start first and believe and not only telling yourself you might not believe it at first, but just like you've been told all these negative things about you that you eventually started believing, if you continue to tell yourself and talk to yourself and have these positive conversations with yourself, mm -hmm. affirming yourself, you will eventually start to believe that. Absolutely. And, but you have I, to go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to throw this in real quick. There's no one coming in on a white horse to do this for you. No one, no one else can do it for you. But you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to be the first, the catalyst first. I mean, you have mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. you have to, if you want to have a different narrative, a different story, mm -hmm. you got to be the one to rewrite it. Say that again. You Rewriting have that narrative is so powerful. I, I share with clients all the time, listen, coming to therapy is like you get an opportunity to have a brand new blank canvas. It sure is. <laughs> and that's part of the empowerment. You yeah, okay? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It's the allergy stuff. It's, oh, yeah. I deal with yeah. those. That's part of being, that's part of empowering yourselves. Mm -hmm. Yourself, mm -hmm. you know? That's and part of the process. It is, and really giving yourself permission. We know, especially as therapists, we know that the traumatic events that you experienced, right? <coughs> Excuse Maybe me. Maybe you need some water. You got some water? Got that too. The hot tea. I, oh. Yeah, got that, but thank you. Um, as therapists, we know that trauma happens. We're not disvaluing that or invalidating that. Right. What we also know, though, is your trauma 
doesn't belong in your now. Right. If you continue to let it ride in your now, the opportunity for you to be your best self may not come. Right. Because trauma stays present. Because you we can work through trauma. May not be able to by yourself. Absolutely. But coming to therapy will actually help you process trauma, rewrite your narrative, and paint a new canvas. What, what are your thoughts about that? I totally agree with you. I I, I think most people uh, run away from trauma. Uh -huh. um, they don't want to deal with it because it was uh -huh. so painful, right? Yes. yes. So, so things that are painful, that hurt, Yep. We tend to run away, right? Mm -hmm. or, or we're in denial of it. Mm -hmm. So most of the time we do need someone to help us work yes. through that trauma and, and, and um, process that trauma mm -hmm. and unpack it. Um, and so I, I agree wholeheartedly with you that, of course, I'm biased <laughs> that a therapist mm -hmm. <laughs> can help you do that. Um, but not only a therapist, someone you trust right um you gotta be someone which, that you trust mm -hmm. someone that you trust which can be a a pastor mm -hmm. um, a a very a teacher a mentor mm -hmm. you know um however you know therapists psychologists psychiatrists are trained in particular right. to help you deal with the trauma so i would recommend highly recommend you know one of them to help you work through it but definitely address it because again a lot of times that's where those emotions are coming from yeah. that you don't understand why mm -hmm. am I so emotional today what triggered that emotion in mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. and we don't understand it because it it's well, again some emotions are in the subconscious in the subconscious, right? yeah. Some are conscious and some are in the subconscious. And if if it's something that, if it's a traumatic event or experience that you've had, that you mm -hmm. have blocked out or that you chose to, or the body chose to forget to protect you at that time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then if you're triggered and you don't even realize it, then those emotions are going to come out. Right. And you ain't going to know how to deal with them. And you really have to tap into the triggers. Why am I triggered about this action or this statement? Why I had a client um, on a couple of days ago said, you know what, this triggers me and I go from zero to a hundred. And my response to that was, that's cool, but why? Right. Why do you give the power of your way to go from zero to 100 and how yeah. can we empower you the right. act of self-empowerment yes to make better decisions right yep. because that zero to 100 is that how you truly want to represent yourself yep yep and so that's why again it's very good for especially for people that don't understand why am I doing this? Like you mm -hmm. asked the question, what, what's happening? What's happening that causes you to do that? Right. 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 What's going on? What's going on? Some mm -hmm. people don't know. They can't figure it out because it's, it's subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. It may mm -hmm. take somebody else to even point out that this is going on with them, that they're, right. they're being so emotional. Mm -hmm. They might not even recognize that they're being that emotional or even emotional period because they're so used to it this is just this is just who I am you know they right. don't recognize that right right so, and, and that's powerful that that recognition is powerful it is. because it allows you to actually own your emotions mm -hmm. own the accountability of those emotions and gives you permission to heal permission to heal and sit with those emotions. You, have, you, a lot of people, you know, they want to stuff down the emotions. They don't want to deal with it. They want to numb their feelings and their emotions. Mm -hmm. But we talk about it all the time in therapy, right? Um, mm -hmm. Sit with your emotions, and then of course the, the 
the, the question is from my class, well, how do you do that, Danya? How do you sit with your emotions? Right. And I have to walk them through the steps. How you sit with your emotions is first of all, it's the first step of everything. You have to be aware. Awareness, Awareness. is the first thing. You have mm -hmm. to know that this is what's happening with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awareness and acknowledging, right? Mm. Okay, I acknowledge that I am hurting right now. Mm -hmm. I, I know something is going on with me. I'm aware that this is not how I normally act when I first get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. aware that something is changing right now and I am experiencing a different emotion. And that emotion is, it could be anything, hurt, pain, anger, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So once you are aware and acknowledge, then, then that's when you say, okay, I give myself permission it's okay for me to have these emotions. Mm -hmm. It is okay mm -hmm. for me to be going through and, and feeling sad. It's okay yeah. for me to be feeling confused. It's okay mm -hmm. for me to mm -hmm. be angry right now. And that is mm -hmm. the most important part of the process that is okay. giving yourself permission to mm -hmm. be right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Be right in there. It. Be right? in it. Don't run away from it. Don't suppress it. If right. it bubbled up, kind of like cooking rice, if it bubbled up, it's time for it to be washed off. That's it. Right? So that you can actually have a healthy balance. Yep. Yeah, so it's okay. It, Darn you. Yep, mm -hmm. it's okay. And then tell, and this is the, which the self-talk we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I, I actually tell my clients, get in front of a mirror and talk to yourself. It's okay for me to have this emotion. And why is it okay? It's okay mm -hmm. for me to be sad because such and such mm -hmm. did whatever, mm -hmm. or such and mm -hmm. such said whatever, or this was taken away, or I'm grieving. My mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. father just died. Whatever it is. Right, right. Hey. And I love mirror work. My clients don't love it as much. Because they yeah. get assigned homework process and so for mirror work. But one of the things that we know is most people only use the mirror as a reflective measure. Mm. But when you literally get in that mirror and you get eye to eye with yourself That's and it. then use that to go internally, mm. you free yourself up from some things. You give yourself that permission to say, let me change my words. Yep. One of the things that I would add to your list is when you have negative emotions that rise up, create a correlated positive list of emotions mm. so that as yes. you begin to affirm that positive emotion, it literally will erase out or cancel out. Washes, that washes away because mm -hmm. you use mm -hmm. the washing of rice. I like that. It washes mm -hmm. away that negative emotion, huh? Yeah. Helps yeah. to. Yeah. Helps to. Yeah. yeah. And, and because we have that power. That's the power that we have in us. We can't control anyone else or even how they emotionally respond to us. Mm -hmm. We get to control how we emotionally respond to them. Absolutely. And so that yeah. is, I'm going to add that to my list because mm -hmm. the last step that I didn't share was to once you acknowledge and you give yourself permission and tell yourself it's okay to sit in that emotion, whatever mm -hmm. it is, then you have to release it, right? Mm -hmm. And you release it in different ways. Some people just like mm -hmm. to cry. Some people like, yeah. like to laugh. Some people like mm -hmm. to exercise and get, get it out like that. Some people can, like you said, write positive mm -hmm. emotions to, 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 to replace if it's a negative one. Sometimes right. it is a positive emotion. And mm -hmm. some people, believe it or not, some people don't even know how to express the positive emotion. They weren't You're taught, they don't right. know how. They're, actually, I think they may know a little glimpse of the how, they're more afraid. You think they're more afraid? Mm -hmm. Because if I express that positive emotion, then now I got to be accountable for it. Mm. Yeah. Now I now That's I have it. to walk in 
in it because everybody is used to me being negative. Oh. Everybody is used to me being angry. Everybody is used to me <laughs> creating the drama mm. and the trauma. But when I become the positive one, I now have to sit with me and honor me and ask me, why are you giving your power away? So I yeah. think that people know a little bit about that flipping of it, but I think that oftentimes people are afraid of that flipping. Fear. Because mm-hmm. now I have to be accountable and sustain mm-hmm. this instead mm-hmm. of being negative all the time. Exactly, exactly. Go to. And, but when we learn to honor ourselves in our emotions, those emotions, when we honor what we're feeling instead of suppressing them, that honoring actually about face that anger. It about face that instant irritability because mm. you stop to ask yourself in your self assessment, why did that make me angry? Why did I respond? So now I got to dig a little deeper in my emotions and say, where's the trauma? Yeah. Where's my hurt? Where's my pain? Where's the pain? Emotions is real. I mean, it's, it's real. Oh, absolutely. But that, but when you do that and dig deeper, it also, it's self-empowering. It It allows you to know, okay, I do have the power to change this and to do Mm -hmm. something different. And to do something about it. Yes. Yes. And and that's the thing that's really, really beautiful is when you can embrace self-empowerment, you can embrace your emotions and giving yourself that permission to say, let me change my words and how I speak to me. Yeah. Let me change my thoughts. And how I no longer would move towards the negative, but bring it back around to the positive. That's pretty powerful. Powerful and freeing, as you said earlier. Mm-hmm. Freeing. Yeah. It gives you the freedom mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to be able to do other things in your life. Absolutely. Man, listen, you have really hit this thing out of the park. I am so excited that you came on to talk about She Motions. I know that this um, series is really going to help break open some people's bondages to themselves of that superwoman effect, that suppression of emotions, and allow them to experience the freedom that they truly desire to have in their life. Do you have any closing words for the audience? Um, Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I love this. Um, You're so welcome. For the audience, I just like to say, you know, there's nothing wrong with she emotions. There's Mm -hmm. nothing. If you can embrace your emotions by Mm -hmm. digging deep within yourself, as we talked about earlier today, um, Mm -hmm. then you give yourself the power, self-empowerment to be free, to express the emotions the way in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. A healthy mm-hmm. way. So we don't have to so run is, from our emotions and be afraid to express them. Exactly. Ex- no more running, you guys. No, no more running. No more on, running. Let's confront. Let's accept. Let's open and embrace up those them. And yes. embrace. Mm-hmm. So we are free so the, and we have the freedom. Exact to cho- we chose. We're choosing freedom. One of my favorite quotes that I recently heard was uh, Bob Marley said, when you emancipate your mind and give it freedom, you allow Mm. yourself to be in that freedom and you are the only one that can do that. The only one that can do it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, Bob Marley was a prophet of all prophets. He had a word for you. How can <laughs> the audience get in contact with you if they want to reach out? Can they follow you on social media? You know what? I am terrible with that. I'm supposed to, my daughter's supposed to be helping me get, get my uh, social media action up and everything. The way they can get in touch with me is to reach me through my email, which is Franklin 50 at gmail.com. Or they can 
call me. Um, and if they actually want to, uh, I'm getting my website built and everything right now. Okay. So I can't get my website out. But that's the, the best ways. Um, okay. Let me, I don't mind. Well, I don't know if I want to share my telephone number. <laughs> yes, I do. No, we'll, we'll stick with the email. I'll put it up there. And once the website and everything is done, we'll run it back and put it out there. Yes, yes. You. Okay. Thank you so much for your yes. Thank you so much for enhancing this conversation on She Motions. Remember you all, you can go out to any streaming app specifically Spotify, Apple, Amazon, YouTube, Catch Authentically Peculiar with Marcia. This is season two where we're going to be normalizing freedom. Go check it out. If you hadn't listened to season one, I would encourage you to go out there and do that. Yes, I started Listen listening to it. To it. I'm telling you, it's, it's some power punches out there. This season is going to be off the chain. Thank you for joining. Remember, each new session starts on Sundays. We will drop the new season beginning in June. So oh, wow. thank you again, Danya. I'm super excited. And we'll see you all on the other side of Authentically Peculiar with Marcia.